The art of snake pass has been an evolution from not almost nothing to what I would consider quite a beautiful game now. As the art director, part of my job is to take what we started with, which was very bare and white box, to the final game. Obviously the original snake um, from the game jam was very basic and not very friendly. Uh, we wanted something that would be a, a lot more friendly than that eventually, but uh, it, from its early beginnings, it was clearly just functional. In the early days, the game didn't really have a, a style as such, so the initial thing was to bring on an art team and a concept artist to start and try and put some sort of style into this game. To that end, we brought in concept artist Paolo, and it was his vision that uh, formed the first iteration of what became Snake Pass that you might know now. Alongside the concept art, we clearly needed to start building this as a model. Dave Poole, one of our modelers, was put in charge of realising the first version of Snake Pass. Well, to, to explain kind of the, the story or the journey that, that we've taken from a, a visual point of view, since coming on board, we've kind of revamped the, the art style to some degree. You may remember Seb's Game Jam piece, which was literally a tree on an island. But it was still kind of in a fairly realistic world. The trees were quite realistic, the sky was quite realistic, and the environment was, was still quite realistic. The main idea was really to try and find a, a very stylistic direction to take the, the game in, to give it a bit of a, a, bit of a visual edge, and, it, and indeed to increase the sort of colour palette, make it a bit more visually interesting and exciting. First of all, let's look at the character. I think at this point we knew we wanted Obviously the snake was going to be the main character and there was some interaction with the hamster character too. Um, we settled on these two characters and from here we started to go down this already. You can start to see a bit more of a crookedy element and a very stylistic, characterful look to the game. And then from here we went on to try and visualise this environment that these two characters would live in. Um, and this in itself was quite a useful image because from here we started to break down all kinds of things. You've got your wonky vines, you've got your, your walkways, you've got the, the stonework which is in its kind of aztec -y, angular. Again, this kind of spiral look is starting to pull through now as a very specific theme. Even the plants and the flowers have this very kind of crookedy look. And I think from here, you know, all these started to give us very strong indicators as to visually how the assets would look. And, and actually, th this was, if you like, a bit, of a bit of a turning point from the visuals from the game. After EGX Res, we had to obviously move into full production. This meant we had to have a final style for the game, uh, how we intended it to be for release. This is the point that I was brought on to make this game uh, an achievable and yet stylized beautiful game. We had to make the levels be modular uh, so that they could be formed into different puzzles easily by the designers. We clearly had to make it look pretty uh, but we needed more diversity in there as well than just the one level that had been concepted early. This is where we decided to go with multiple elements. So we have wind, fire, earth, water, all these were brought in to bring diversity and a certain look to certain parts of the game. There were some things that had to be improved on, for example, the foliage in the levels wasn't as, you know, diverse in the different worlds that we have, which I thought was very important because you can't have water level plants in a fire level, you know, that's, it doesn't work. So, you know, tasks like that, trying to make it fit better together, the lighting, for example, really helped, I think. I created uh, a set of mood boards to describe the colour palette that we wanted to use in each of the elements. Clearly, we wanted uh, uh, the fire levels to be driven by reds and oranges and autumn colours. Um, the air levels to be bright and vibrant with high exposure, um, thin air. Um, so blues and cyans are dominant in those levels. The water levels were 
meant to be quite humid and although we want to keep it bright and colourful, we wanted it to feel almost oppressively humid. So the, there's a, a, a short draw distance on the fog in those levels. Uh, we bring in the atmosphere uh, to drive the colour palette in that particular environment. A lot of the look in the um, earth environment comes from the earlier EGX Res uh, demo. We tried to retain quite a lot of the look of that while still building it out of new blocks and giving it a, a more uh, concentrated colour palette. From the original snake that we got in, this, in the game jam, clearly we needed to be more friendly. So it was made more friendly for the EGX Res demo. The result of that was sort of mixed. It was sort of still creeping people out. So we needed to make an even more friendly version of the snake, we felt. We got one of our concept artists, Simon, and Simon and I worked hard on making the friendliest version of Noodle that you can possibly imagine. What we needed on Noodle was a, 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 a colour palette that's vibrant. We also needed him to have rings rather than a pattern that runs down him. For technical reasons, his, bodies, his body parts rotate, which you would be able to see if he'd got a pattern running along his body. So we needed just rings around his body. It's hard to tell when they rotate. As the game's developed, We've included a lot of things in there that the user might not be aware of, but there are subtle details in there. You might not miss it, but the use of metal is, is very sparse. Um, there's only, if ever you see metal, it's something special, a coin. There are clues dotted around the landscape as to what the backstory or what the story is. Look for anything that seems incongruous because it might be a clue to what the game is actually about. Have a look around your environment for the snake patterns on the wall. If there's a snake pattern on the wall, if you follow that, it might give you a good idea of a direction. In Noodle's experience, everything is natural to him. He doesn't question anything. So as, as a player, you, we're trying to make you see the world through Noodle's eyes. We never mentioned the lost civilization, which clearly built our worlds. We wanted our world to look like the ancient civilization had left it. Um, as you go through the game, we start off with it looking abandoned, but when you get towards the air, it looks even more abandoned, as though it was probably abandoned earlier. Uh, there are big spaces between the rocks. It looks like it's starting to drift apart. This kind of makes it more dangerous because there are more places that you can fall off. This is a game I'm very proud of. I'm happy to have worked on it, it's, it's been a, a great experience. I hope everybody out there has the same enjoyment and great experience of it that I have.